Inspiration can come from anywhere. In creating the world of Aether Call, told through this series of dioramas, I have pulled inspiration from all of my favorite stories and characters. I was challenged to recreate a classic fairy tale, so I decided to pick one from this beautiful collection and make it my own. Let's take a look at how I inserted Red Riding Hood into the realm of Noveni. This is Horizons Forge, and it's time to answer the call. I'm still learning how to 3D sculpt, so right now there is no chance that I will be able to recreate these characters, so I hopped online to find some appropriate model designs. I have been enjoying using models that are scaled up 30% or so from standard 28mm scale. I have no idea what scale that brings them up to, so if you happen to know, please leave a comment. The models came out beautifully thanks to the new Sun Lu resin I have been using, and they come out much stronger as well. If you want these models for yourself, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description for the STLs that I used. I wanted this scene to be a more intimate face-to-face, -face, where the huntsman is facing down the big bad wolf and Red is preparing to make the final blow. We will be getting into how I altered their story later on when I explain more of the lore of Aethercall and Nuveni. Using some XPS foam and MDF, I created a base and lined up where I want a cliff face to be. Then, I milled down some more foam on my Proxon Hotwire Cutter. When making specific cuts like this, resting your forearms on the table and moving the foam with only your fingers and wrists helps to keep everything steady. This gave me three very similar shaped pieces that I could stack on top of each other and lock together using hot glue. Then I filled all of the gaps with a foam putty. I use this particular product as it can easily be treated like foam, unlike other gap fillers. This is important for the next step. Making horizontal cuts of various depth and then dragging the handle of the knife vertically gives you a fairly nice striation effect on the rock faces like this and makes them look more natural. More horizontal brush strokes with a wire brush helps to add to this effect. And don't forget to wear a mask and clean up your mess. You don't want any of this getting in your lungs. In lieu of using a homemade ground texture, I went with an out of the jar option from Vallejo. I don't necessarily like this texture and it shrunk a lot when it fully cured. It probably would be much better suited for just small model bases. After struggling to break apart brittle plaster rocks, I scattered them throughout the scene. I made dozens of these in different shapes and sizes almost a year ago, so breaking them up helps keep things looking different. For those of you wanting to get into airbrushing, I highly recommend getting a portable airbrush booth like this. It is honestly one of the best hobby purchases I have ever made. It's a good thing I had one too, as I did quite of airbrushing on this project. Priming all my models in black and giving them a zenithal highlight of white from above helps me see the details and gives my thinner paints some instant definition. Whether or not I use a speed paint, contrast paint, or other variation of that style, I always do a zenithal prime. It really helps me to see where highlights should go. Next time you try this, take a picture of the model before you start painting after giving it the prime to see where the brightest points are, and then highlight those later on in the process. Using inks through an airbrush, usually mixed with a matte varnish, has become my favorite way of painting terrain. It gives me the ability to undercoat pieces like I do here with bright unnatural colors, tone them down, and then add various blends with ease. I went a little overboard with the brown color here as it wasn't as transparent as I thought it was, but I will bring these colors back later. It's actually pretty important that they show through on the final result. I've had these cheap plastic plants for over a year now and haven't found a use for them. Uh, I think they're a bit too large for 28 millimeters scale and they look fake and shiny. So I made them look more fake and less shiny by airbrushing them with a very vibrant matte paints. There must be something going on here that's making these plants look so crazy. Using watered down inks, I tried to bring back more of those colors from before, but more splotchy and erratic, but trying to keep the lighter colors on top and darker ones on the bottom.
progressively lighter dry brushing over the whole piece brings out the detail and the edges of the stones and cliff. This is almost always one of my favorite parts of painting. Following that, a thin black wash gives the piece a bit more depth in the recesses and helps tie all of the colors together. Now I wanted to cover up that texture paste, so I applied a layer of PVA glue, which I spread around with a brush. Then I sprinkled some dirt from my backyard all over the piece. Make sure you bake anything from the outdoors like this in the oven to remove any insects or bacteria. And then finally, I hit the dirt with a one-two punch of isopropyl alcohol and watered down matte Mod Podge to seal everything in. Before I continue on to the story, I just wanted to take a moment to express my gratitude for you taking the time to watch any of my videos. So thank you for joining me today. If you're interested in supporting the growth of this channel, you'll find some ways to do so in the description below. There's a Patreon where you can get some cool perks while helping out. I also have a merch store and an Amazon affiliate link for those who might be interested. No pressure, of course, but your support means the world to me. Liking, commenting, and subscribing also help the channel reach more people, which again will help this channel grow. So thank you for being here. Now let's get on to some more. This story takes place in a region of Nemeni known as Falstir, and it has shown signs of corruption in the ethereal flows that permeate throughout the entire continent. Falstir is a remote and isolated region, surrounded by rugged terrain and natural barriers, making it harder to access compared to other areas of the realm. This isolation has shaped the culture of the region, fostering a sense of self-reliance and independence among its own inhabitants. Ether is a magical energy that permeates the world of Neveni, and in Falstir, this energy is somehow corrupted, leading to a higher occurrence of ether mutations. These mutations can affect both living beings and the environment, resulting in unique and often dangerous variations of creatures and plant life. The locals have learned to coexist with these mutations and adapt their lifestyles accordingly. Due to the elevated rate of ether mutations, the people of Falstir are cautious about utilizing ether in their everyday lives. While ether is a powerful resource in the realm, the risk of uncontrollable mutations has led the Falstirians to rely on more traditional means for their daily needs, such as manual labor and conventional tools. Unlike other regions where ether technology and machinery are prevalent, Falstir has limited access to such advanced technology. Instead, they employ more natural and simpler methods to sustain their communities, making use of skills and craftsmanship passed down through generations. To protect the neighboring regions, particularly the bustling city of Telamir, the Telamir dynasty takes charge of regulating Falstir's borders. They maintain strict surveillance to prevent ethereal mutants from escaping and causing chaos in surrounding areas. This arrangement has forced a complex relationship between the two regions, with Telamir providing resources and support to maintain the border's security. Given the prevalence of ether mutations within Falstir, dangerous and extraordinary creatures roam the region. As a result, Monster hunting has become a profitable profession for brave individuals seeking to earn a living. Skilled hunters are highly sought after by the locals of Falstir and the Telamir dynasty to protect their lands and settlements. And now with our scene set, I'd like to dive into the story of Red and her companion. These daring hunters have been tracking their prey for several weeks now. Normally they would not spend so much time on a single hunt, but the bounty on this particular creature is substantial. They were secretly hired by a less than reputable group who dwell in the deepest reaches of the city of Telamir. The hunters knew what these people do and are capable of. 
capturing those who are sick with minor ether mutations in hopes that they will transform, as some do, into horrific beasts. These creatures are then used as fodder for combat in a bloody arena for sport. Unfortunately for the, quote, owners of this creature, it laid waste to the spectators of the arena after obliterating its foes and then escaped to the dangerous west. Traveling through the border and into False Deer, where the creature was heading, would be difficult for most individuals without the proper paperwork to grant them entry, but they have completed enough hunts within the borders to know the secret passages in and out. They finally come face to face with their prey, while must have already been a giant man pre-mutation, now a colossal human-wolf hybrid, snarling and vicious. Red kept to the shadows as she often does, whilst the hunter used all of his strength and vigor to push the beast into a corner. This effort was not without strain on the man. While the beast was subdued, he now feels though he has not the strength to continue and one wrong move will mean his end. That is, until he sees a small rock fall behind the wolf. Without bringing attention to it, the hunter glances up to see his red-cloaked companion, weapons drawn, ready to leap upon the unsuspecting wolf. Thank you all for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed my little story here. If this is something you want more of, please let me know, like, comment, and subscribe. That way I can make more and more of this type of content. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.